Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this Pack 40 AT gun with crew. Are you gonna build that crew, Herbert? Maybe. As the box would suggest, this is a 28mm scale plastic model kit from Rubicon Models. The back of the box is pretty typical. There's a couple of paragraphs of words that say things. Things about the Pack 40s development and use through World War II. There's also a very basic painting guide and a 3D render showing the gun and how you might set it up with the crew. Inside the box, sprues. There's one sprue for the gun itself and it looks rather good. It's moulded nice and neatly and there's not much in the way of mould lines. They are of course there, as always, but it's not going to be a lot of work to clean them up. This is, in fact, primarily a gaming model, though you can, of course, use it for display if you like. It'll work perfectly well for that too, but it is primarily a gaming piece. So, as you're probably sick of hearing me say, some of the detail will be a little simplified or just plain omitted. And obviously that means there aren't going to be as many parts as you might find on a model designed specifically for display. I don't consider this a problem of course, and there are enough parts here for a reasonable amount of detail, and they're quite nice. In addition to the gun sprue, there are three sprues with figures. This gun has six crew figures and they're not too bad looking really. As with the rest of the models, Rubicon's figures are getting better with time as well. These will need a little bit more clean up than the parts for the gun, but still nothing too taxing. The instruction sheet looks pretty much like every other set of Rubicon instructions, and that's certainly a good thing. Though there were a couple of very minor issues in this set, I'll talk about them when I get to them. Otherwise, things are easy to understand and follow, which is what I expect and what instructions really should be. Let's use those instructions now to guide us in the gluing together of some bits of plastic. Actually, not to upset the glue god or anything, but instead of gluing right away, I took the time to drill out the gun barrel. The drill bit that I've used is definitely smaller than the opening of the barrel should be, so I make it a bit wider with my knife. Probably still not quite accurate, but it's better than it was before. And certainly a lot better than having a solid flat surface there. Okay, now it's time for gluing. I attach this thing, which forms half of the gun breech. It plops into place nice and easily. There's a guide tab on the bottom of the gun breech that should link into the slot on this thing, which I'm sure has a name, like Barry or John or something. The gun goes on top of this nice and easily. The instructions don't actually show that you should join these two parts, and the diagram does show that it's already in place. It's not a huge problem, and I was obviously able to figure out what was going on, I guess this is just something that was able to sneak past proofreading or something like that. Anyway, next we build the gun holdy bit. Such technical terminology! If you want the gun to be movable, you'll have to glue the two halves of the holdy bit together and sandwich the gun in between them. It is a little bit fiddly, but not the hardest thing to do. You could also just glue it all together, which would be a bit easier. I am going to glue all of this together so that it won't move, but not until I've got all of the things on and can determine how I want the gun to be elevated. One of the things I add is this thing, which is, I think, part of the gun shield. It is a little bit fiddly to get onto the bottom of the gun, and I had to apply some pressure to do so, and the smallness of the part does mean it's kind of hard to apply pressure without it just flying away, but I got there in the end, and I think it's even up the right way. Amazing. Next, I add this thing, which I think is the gun sight, though of course I don't know anything about these guns, so I'm just guessing. There isn't actually anything to guide this, but this is where it looks like the instructions wanted. Then I add this part with the elevation and traverse controls. I forgot to film myself actually putting it on, but it's not too tricky to do. After that, I put on the gun shield. There's a few contact points for this, so it's fairly easy to do. You may find you need to apply some pressure, and when you do, be careful not to break any of the parts off with your mighty strength. That's the upper section of the gun done. Nice, quick, and easy. Time for the gun carriage, starting with the gun trails. These don't really need much done to them. This one, which I think is the left side. Can you not tell your left from right, Herbert? I can, but I guess it really depends on which way you're looking at the gun. Anyway, this thing goes on here and I think it's the towing bit. If you're building this folded up in towing mode, you would attach this differently, and if you are doing that, refer to the instructions. 
There's a similar story with the other trail, which has this thing which in the deployed position goes here. If you want to build the transport mode version of this it would go between both trails, connecting them together. I follow this by gluing the lower bit of the gun shield onto the frame. There is, again, a different part if you want to build the gun in transport mode. Two parts actually, because the lower part of the shield folds up. Obviously since I'm building a deployed gun, I use the single part, and thanks to the keying, it's pretty easy to put this together. Next, it's time to connect the gun trails to the rear section of the framey bit. Initially this seemed like it would be tricky, but you can actually hook the trails onto the frame and they'll stay there. I make sure that they are the right way up, and then I glue that half of the framey bit onto the forward half, and I'm trying not to knock the piece of gun shield out of place, but it happened anyway. If you want, you can leave this so the gun trails can be moved. I've glued them into place because I don't want them wiggling around all willy nilly. The wheels come next, because why not? There is a little bit of play in these, and I felt a need to apply some pressure, but they're not too hard to apply nice and straight. And that's the lower half of the gun done. It was really quite easy. Now seems like a good time to join the upper and lower assemblies, so I do that. As with the trails, you could leave this so that it moves. There is a part you can glue onto the bottom of the pin to hold it all together, but I just glued it all solidly in place so it will stay exactly where I want it. And that's the gun done. Looks good, but that's not all that comes in the kit. We get some loose pieces of ammo. There's also two ammo crates, which are closed, and one which is open, and you can fit three rounds into this, which is what I've done. I do like that you don't have to put three in. You could put two, or one, or even none. Amazing. You could also glue the lid into place if you really wanted to. I've obviously not done that, but I did glue the rounds into the box. I do quite like these extra bits, though it does mean that I now feel obligated to attach this model to a base. I'm not going to do it now, but I will at some point. Not only do we get some nice pieces of unused ammo, there's also a couple of spent casings. The ends of these are solid, so I drilled them out, and that should make them look a bit more convincing. Okay, this is one of those rare times where I'm going to build the crew. Most of the figures in this kit go together in the same way, though one of the figures does have a two-part torso, which is simple to put together, and once you've got the torso ready you can glue the head on or the arms if you prefer. Do it in whichever order makes the most sense to you. Arms come next and on this figure that's a single part, with binoculars. That's why the head went on first. All of the arms and heads are designed to go with particular bodies and not be mixed and matched, but if you really want to, you can probably do it anyway. This assembly is like most figures in this scale. It's pretty easy, though you will probably end up with some gaps at the shoulders, which really is not a big issue. It shouldn't be hard to fix them with some putty. There's a couple of figures holding shells, and these are only slightly more fiddly to put together than the other figures. You've just got to be a bit more careful with the arms so that they're holding the shell in a convincing way. Obviously I haven't shown myself assembling all of the figures, but I did do it. And with that, the plastic German Pac-40 AT gun in 28mm scale from Rubicon Models is completed. I'm rather pleased with the result, I think it's very good. There was, as I mentioned earlier, that one little issue with the instructions. It is unusual to see an error like that in Rubicon's instructions, but nobody's perfect. And it's not exactly something that prevents the model from being completed. It's just something people should be aware of so they don't get confused. As I said earlier, it's not quite as detailed as a display model might be, but that's not the main purpose of this. The reason I keep pointing this thing out is, for some reason, there is the occasional buff head that doesn't get it and has to whine about these models not being the same as their 35th scale display pieces. Oh well, it's very nice for what it is, and I'm sure it would be quite useful in games like Bolt Action, assuming there's armour for it to shoot at. I don't think this is really an anti-infantry weapon. I wouldn't actually know if it's any good in those games, and I don't especially care if it is. It looks cool, so it's got a place in my army. I've clearly not been able to set up the crew as they should look, and that can wait for a base for it, I've just blue tacked them down. I may actually try to be clever and magnetise the crew so they can be removed if killed. Not really sure if that's worth it or even relevant for bolt action. Anyway, I won't be doing the basing anytime soon, so that's something for future Herbert to worry about. 
This is the voice of future Herbert. Fuck you. I've got no idea why future Herbert sounds like a ghost. This was a fun kit to put together. It's quick and easy, and I built this in one short stream. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you've built one of these or any other cool models and you want to share, why not drop by our friendly Discord community and show us some pictures. We would love to see what you've done. If you want to watch me build kits like this one live on stream, head on over to my Twitch channel. You can find the link to Twitch in the description below. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe here on YouTube for the low low price of zero dollars. Or if you have the means, and you want to help a Herbert 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 do Herbert 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 things, as well as see my videos a bit early before there's ads, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have a nice day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.